Have you ever heard a song and right away you knew the whole thing and you knew it really well? You knew the lyrics, you knew the rhythm, you knew everything about that song. You even knew when the drum solo was going to kick in. And maybe it was a song you hadn't heard in a long time and maybe it was a song you didn't even like to begin with and yet there it is in your head in very good detail. Would you like to know how to create that kind of a resilient memory for something you actually want to know? Something you really want to learn? My name is Nancy Tilton Hand, author of Beyond Rainmaking, Accelerated Learning Techniques for Law School, the Bar Exam, and Beyond. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to create implicit memory using a technique called priming. And that's what those memories are. When they get that ingrained, when they're that natural, and they come to you effortlessly, they're probably implicit memories. And you have two types of long-term memories, explicit and implicit. Explicit memories are formed when you actually learn something on purpose. And those are the memories that you remember learning, like grammar or, say, the metric system, or something like that, where you've actually put forth the effort and you, you've learned them. Implicit memories are, are learned a different way. They're actually picked up osmotically through your environment and through life experiences. Uh, examples of implicit memories include your native language or uh, your emotional responses to things. And so you can create implicit memory. And when you use the two types of memory in tandem to learn something, you create even more resilient, long-lasting, effortless memories. And you can use it for anything from math to science to law to medicine. And so one way to create implicit memories is a technique called priming. And priming is really simple. It, it's just exposure, multiple exposures over time. And it doesn't have to be a lot of time either. So what happens when you expose your brain to new information is that it creates a neural network. It begins to make sense of it and it takes the information in. And it, I say exposure because that's all you need. It's outside of your conscious awareness, but your brain is picking it up and your brain is handling it, finding a place to put it, and building that neural network around it. You can use priming for, for books or audio materials that you might have. So I'll give you an example with the book, and I'll use my book as an example. And if you're priming a book, all you have to do is look at the pages. Just flip through and look at those pages. You don't have to try to remember anything. You're not scanning, you're not skimming, you're not reading, you're not trying. Your brain's getting it for you though, and that's the beautiful part. And if you're actually studying something in earnest already, when you do this, it's gonna make that uptake of material more effortless for you, and the recall will be a lot more accurate. And the way to use this with audio materials would be to just Say you have class lectures or something that you can listen to, just turn them on while you're doing something else like, like walking the dog or cooking dinner or driving or anything like that. Just put them on. You don't have to listen. You just have to be able to hear them because your brain is listening. You don't have to do anything. And that's really it. It's really that easy. When you use the two types of learning in tandem, so if you're learning something and you also engage implicit uh, learning through multiple exposures over time, it, it creates very long-lasting, very natural types of memories. And a good example would be immersion language learning, where you actually study a language while you're living in a place where it's being spoken around you all the time. You pick it up a lot faster than you would if you were learning it from a book in school. I know I've done it. So that's it. It's just that easy. I know a lot of you are studying for the July bar exam and are probably about up to here with the studying and maybe need a, a conscious break. This is a way to take a study break and take some time off from what you've been doing, which is reading and drilling and flashcards and practice tests and that kind of thing, and take a walk and listen to your class lectures or sit back in your comfy chair and flip through your 27 pounds of books. and what you'll be doing is reinforcing and, and supporting all of your other studies that you've been doing and that you will do up to the exam. So for everybody out there, I wish you happy learning. And for those of you sitting for the bar exam, I hope to see your name on the pass list. And again, my name is Nancy Tilton Hand. You can find me at www.nancytiltonhand.com. 
And the book, again, is Beyond Rainmaking, Accelerated Learning Techniques for Law School, the Bar Exam, and Beyond.